Hello friends, welcome to the channel Physics by IITM. In this video, we will discuss some of the questions related to the electromagnetic theory, and also we will discuss one of the concept of this electromagnetic theory uh, for a wave traveling in a conducting medium. So let's start this video. So let's discuss this first question. In this question, the electric field of a plane wave in a conducting medium is given to you. and you have to ask you have been asked to find the phase difference between the magnetic field vector and the electric field vector so before discussing this question let's start how a plane wave propagates inside a conducting medium let's discuss this first so we know that if this is a conducting medium there will be a some finite current density and that current density you can write like uh, using the ohms law as sigma e and also the the usual maxwell equations that we write in a vacuum will be modified for a conducting medium so the first equation will be modified by this rho rho term and the second in the second equation we will have this extra term now also using the continuity equation we can write that the divergence of this current density j is negative of del rho over del t and also if you combine the ohms law with this uh, continuity equation you can write this equation as del rho f over del t will be negative of sigma divergence of e or you can say it like negative of sigma over epsilon uh, permittivity that is epsilon rho f so this equation this is a different linear uh, differential equation of first order this can be uh, simply solved so you will find the solution of this rho as a function of time it will be e to the power sorry yeah it is it will be e to the power minus sigma over epsilon times t and this is sig, uh, rho zero it is the initial value of the rho now in this equation if we see that um, when we have a very high conductivity if the conduct, uh, conductivity of the medium is infinite then this term will be zero because at sigma to be infinity this exponential term will tends to zero so this sigma over epsilon we can say it is a some uh, time constant factor tau so the tau will be zero for a very good conductor but uh, for uh, not a very good conductor or a normal conductor this tau will be some fine, will have some finite value so if we consider uh, for a good conductor this rho to be zero so we can uh, modify the maxwell equations so the first term in the maxwell equation that was having this rho term will now be zero so these will be the maxwell equation and if we take the curl of the third and the fourth equation we can find a, a wave equation so this will be the wave equation for the electric field vector and this will be the wave equation for the magnetic field vector so these are the two wave equations wait a second let me take a laser pointer okay this is not yeah. okay fine so these are the two maxwell equations that we can obtain by solving the third and fourth maxwell equations now if we solve these two uh, wave equations for a plane wave solution so the electric field vector and the magnetic field vector as a function of z and t can be written like this where this e not and e not and the v not are the some complex numbers and here this k vector the wave number will also be some complex value that will be given by this equation uh, where this is the term like mu epsilon omega square will be the real part plus eta mu sigma omega and we can take the square root of this equation we can find the wave number as k plus eta k so where this k is the norm uh, real real part of this uh, wave number and this another k is the imaginary part so these real and imaginary parts can be written by these two equations so for this our electric and magnetic field vectors will now be written as e not e to the power minus kz plus eta Uh, e to the power i ta kz minus omega t and similarly for the magnetic field vector now as we know uh, these are the plane wave solutions for electric and magnetic field here if we see that uh, in the conductor the electric field or the magnetic field wave cannot travel much far it will damp at a distance of 1 by e so we can define the skin depth from this so the skin depth that is defined as the distance it takes to reduce the amplitude by a factor of 1 by e is now will be 1 by k it this skin depth if we define it is actually the measure of how 
a wave how far a wave can pen penetrate inside any conductor also using the real part of this case we can find the wave wavelength the propagation speed and also the reflection index so the wavelength will be 2 pi by k remember for the wave number we are having two different parts one is the real part and another is the imaginary part from the imaginary part we are defining the skin depth and from the real part we are defining the wavelength the propagation speed that is omega over k and also the wave number that is ck over omega so for this particular case our electric and magnetic field vectors can now be written like this and here this uh, magnetic field vector is having a uh, k complex number and due to this k complex number there will be a phase difference between uh, electric and magnetic field vectors so if i write this k complex number as some k e to the power i eta phi where phi is the phase difference and also we can write this k as square root of the real part square plus the imaginary part square and the phase difference phi will be written as tan inverse imaginary part over the real part so our complex amplitudes of the electric and magnetic field vectors are having some phase difference delta e and delta b and this difference of the delta b minus delta e that is the phase difference between magnetic and electric field vectors will be given by this phi that is tan inverse k over k so for any plane wave solution in a conductor that is having the electric field as e not e to the power minus kz cos kz minus omega t plus delta e where delta is the phase difference of this electric field and then for the magnetic field it will have some another phase difference phi so the phase difference between b and e vector will be given by this phi value that is tan inverse k over k where the magnetic field will lag behind the electric field by this phi factor now let's come to our original question where we have been given the electric field vector and we have been asked to find the phase difference between the magnetic field and the electric field so as we come if we compare this particular equation by this equation so we can find the imaginary part k and the real part k so our imaginary part will be 1 over 3a by comparing this factor and our real part will be 1 over square root of 3a by uh, comparing the angle of this cosine factor so we know the real part we know the imaginary part we can find the phase difference pi that is tan inverse k over k so it will be 1 over square root of 3 so we can find that the phase difference is 30 degrees so we can say that the magnetic field lags behind the electric field by an angle of 30 degree so this is the answer of this question let's discuss another question this is slightly simpler question in which you have been given the refractive index of a medium in which a electromagnetic wave of frequency omega is propagating it is given as 1 minus omega over omega not whole square so the question is asking what is the ratio of the group velocity and the phase velocity for a frequency of omega equal to omega not over 2 now to answer this question we should first know what are the group and phase velocities of any medium uh, of any wave in a medium so we know the refractive index as 1 minus omega square over omega not square we can write this refractive index as c over vp actually the refractive index is the ratio of velocity of light in vacuum over the velocity uh, phase velocity so this c over vp we can find and at we know that uh, n is 1 minus omega square over omega not square we can put this omega to be omega not by 2 because we need to find the ratio at a frequency of omega not by 2 so if we plug in these values we can find that the c over omega p will be 3 by 4 or our phase velocity of this wave will be 4c by 3 similarly we can find the group velocity also we can know, we know that this uh, refractive index is ck over omega where i have written this omega uh, velocity the phase velocity as omega over k so from here we can find the relation between k and omega so we can say that kc will be omega minus omega q over omega not square and group velocity we define as the derivative of omega with k that is g omega over dk so we have to differentiate this equation so we can differentiate with respect to omega let's suppose so we can find dk over d omega and c is a constant we can keep it as it is and we can differentiate the right hand side it will be 1 minus 3 omega square over omega not square so now in this equation we can put this omega again as omega not by 2 so our dk over 
d omega from this we can obtain to be 1 by 4 so we can say that the group velocity that is d omega over dk will be 4c so now we know what is the group velocity we also know what is the phase velocity so we can find the ratio so the ratio of group velocity over the phase velocity for this particular question will be 3 so thus we can solve this question so option for this question will be a you can become a part of our uh, different programs you can be a part of our test series program the interview guidance program and also a programming guidance package if you want to join any of these programs you can contact us in the uh, number 75991819 thank you uh, please like this video uh, share with your friends and subscribe subscribe to our channel thank you